Hello, let's take a look at the new features in DFT Fringe 6.0. The first is an added zoom capability to the DFT display. When we press done on the interferogram, the DFT display pops up. Now you can use the keyboard controls or the mouse wheel to zoom in. This makes it easier to set the blue circle filter value. The keyboard shortcuts are shown over here on the right hand side. You can zoom in, zoom out, or zoom to the full display using the plus, minus, or F key. Next is a more significant change, a new way to smooth the wavefront called Zerniki smoothing. You can use this in place of the Gaussian blur to smooth the wavefront. Its advantage is, unlike the Gaussian blur, it won't turn the edge. This works well for a very smooth mirror. However, for a very rough mirror, it may hide surface detail unless you use enough Zerniki terms. The more Zerniki terms you use, the longer it will take to do its job. You select it from the Tools menu. Then you select the number of Zerniki terms to use. The more terms, the better it matches the surface, but the longer it takes to do the match. So, how do you know when you've used enough terms? Well, that's the purpose of the residual checkbox. So check it and we'll talk about that later. So, for demonstration purposes, I've selected 100 Zerniki terms and turned on the residual wavefront. So that means we'll create two wavefronts, a smooth wavefront and the residual wavefront. I'll close the Smoothing Wavefront dialog, so then I can inspect those wavefronts. And here they are. What gets displayed first is the smooth wavefront, even though the residual is what shows selected. Sorry about that. Notice that the smooth wavefront name has the number of Zerniki terms appended to the end of it. In the profile view, I've selected Show All Wavefronts, so you can see the new smooth wavefront in the dark blue color and the original wavefront, the bumpier one, in black. The light cyan is the residuals. Residuals are simply the original wavefront with the smooth wavefront subtracted from it. So that shows you what surface features are not modeled by the 100 Zerniki terms I chose. The smooth wavefront looks nice and smooth, but we wonder if it selected all of the real features that are on the surface. Therefore, we'll look more at the residual wavefront. Okay, well, the bumps we see here are bigger and more organized than I would expect for random noise that we would normally see from a bath interferometer. There are large red and blue features, as well as a faint circular feature about halfway out from the center to the edge. So I think we haven't included enough Cerniki terms. But let's compare the smooth surface to the original surface one other way. Let's show a contour plot of all three. So here on the left we have the original wavefront, the smooth wavefront in the middle, and the residuals on the right. The residuals on the right have an RMS value of 0.013. And then once again, here is the profile plot showing what we have. So let's select the original wavefront and then try different smoothing value with a higher value. It 
In this case, I picked the 50th order, which is 676 terms. This is going to take a little while. On my machine, it took about a minute and a half. I'm going to fast forward to the end. For those interested, you can see the Tsuniki terms that it calculated over on the left-hand side of this dialog if you scroll through all the Tsuniki terms. Okay, here we see the new residuals. They look a lot more random, and their RMS value is 0 0.008 compared to the 0 0.013 before. So now let's compare the original smoothing analysis to this smoothing analysis. The lower row is the new smooth of 676 terms. And so this shows you how the new smoothing dialog works, and you'll have to play with it and decide for yourself what number of terms you need to use for the amount of smoothing you would like. Okay, moving on. Next, I fancied up the point spread function display, mostly just because I could and I was having fun. So let's press the star test tab to bring it up. The first thing you notice is it's no longer starts in log display. I find it easier to see the difference in the central maximum for the perfect versus the actual display when it's not in log mode. There is a log mode checkbox that you can check to see the log display. Here it is. And here it's turned off. Next, you can display it as a 3D surface, which has the same controls as the 3D surface control. And it too has a log display version. Finally, I thickened the MTF plots and change the colors so it's easier to see the difference between the X and the Y axis through the MTF. The last change is to the Ronke and Foucault graph. If you right click on either the Ronke or the Foucault, it'll bring up a menu to allow you to save either image. There are other bug fixes that you can read about in the history revision HTML file available from the help menu.